Okay, our, uh, our last question. Uh, with various coaches, um, they have different views on the, the value of, of the uh, dynamic effort work. Uh, from each of you, can you tell me a little bit about what, uh, how important is dynamic effort training to you? How do you apply it? And, 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 in what, and, and if that's not the same for everybody, what's, would you, what, what things do you look at to determine if an athlete needs dynamic effort work? Matt? Um, for us, when we do dynamic effort work, uh, we'll cycle in you know, the tr traditional eight sets of three, um, but we also cycle in uh, five or six sets of five reps. Um, with, with the new shirts, when the, as they're tighter and it's harder to touch, uh, the time under tension is, is greater. So you need to be able to bring it down, actually touch, and still have, you know, be used to being under pressure for five seconds versus the old three seconds where you need to bring it straight down. Um, and still be able to press it back up. So uh, we've made some changes with that. Uh, I think we've, you know, you've had kind of quite a bit of luck switching to the five or six sets of five. Um, other than that, um, as far as who needs it, I think um, I would say it depends on the person. You know, um, in my you know my case, I I don't strain really well. Like a lot of times you'll see me, if I, if I go to press something, I might press it and then I kind of miss. Um, you don't see me strain through a lot of uh, heavy pressing or anything like that. So for me, the dynamic effort stuff is, is really important because I can get that time under tension um, uh, with that. So if you find somebody who, like a lot of times, you know, if they're not, a, they can't grind through stuff, I think that, that's great. Um, other thing is, um, I think it's a good way to uh, get help get somebody in shape. If they're a little bit out of shape, they can push their rest periods, get some extra volume in um, that way. So, uh, raw lifters, I think I think it's good for raw lifters, um, but I think they could cycle in more uh, repetition stuff uh, in there. But for geared guys, I think it's I think it's great. Julian, um, to touch a little bit about on that, he touched a little bit on how we use it with our bench press. Um, with our, my squat work, um, that's kind of where a lot of my heavy squat stuff comes into play. Um, we'll do different, you know, chain cycles, chains and band combinations and things like that. So um, that's a pretty integral part of my, of my squat training. Um, as for other lifters and using it and is it useful, um, I think for kind of that intermediate lifter, I think it can be helpful in the, the repetitive nature of the movement. So it when you're doing sets of, you know, whatever it is, you know, you're doing eight sets of two on a squat at, you know, 60 some percent, it's not heavy enough to where they're getting smashed. So they can technically work on what they need to work on. Plus it teaches them how to push through the bar, um, how to apply force to the bar. And I think that's what a lot of those, as, as they transition from beginner lifters into intermediate lifters, that's kind of an integral part of, because either they'll, I mean, I've seen people, you put five pounds on the bar and all of a sudden they get smashed. So this, I think, helps them to learn how to apply force to the bar and push through and allows them to technically work on what they need to work on because it's not quite so heavy. With raw lifters, again, I think they can do a little bit more higher percentage work if you want to get into percentages and stuff or rep work. Um, but overall, I think it, you know, I think technically it helps them and it helps them, you know, to learn how to push through and accelerate the bar. Adam, what's your view on dynamic effort? Um, we, we rarely use it, um, <coughs> but I will, I will add it in when I can tell, and this, personally, and this is how I have any of my um, um, lower level guys in the gym do it as well. When I see my own lift or their lift slowing down, mm -hmm. and you know, I can tell, especially in my own lifting, when I have forgotten how to explode, you know, when I've forgotten how to really apply the force in the bottom, you, know, you you stay away from something long enough, you know, it kind of just goes away, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it just fades. And so I'll bring it in for a couple of weeks, um, especially on the squat. You know, I can tell that I've slowed down out of the hole. I'll bring it in for a couple of weeks, remember it, learn how to do it again, and then it's gone again until I need it again. And that's, that's exactly how I would apply it to any of the uh, lifters that we have in the gym. If we see them doing, you know, a 60%, 60 or 70% lift in the gym and they're slow, then you know I might suggest, hey, for the next couple of weeks, why don't you lighten the load? And let's really, let's do some explosive work and let's get that back.
but generally three or four weeks at the most, and then we're we're back to our normal normal okay. programming. And Brian, for me personally, um, when I first started training with Adam, uh, it's been about ten years now. We did follow it to a T: dynamic effort, max effort, and that you know that's the way we did it. Then we both kind of deviated after a while, and we kind of went more so. You know, Monday heavy bench. It was a you know a Thursday dynamic dynamic effort. Now it's more geared toward like a weak point day. So we don't necessarily have a specific day where we work speed, unless it needs to be addressed. Now me personally, I treat every warm up and move it as absolutely as fast as I can, whether it be raw, in gear, and then I'll t uh, treat my deload days. Whether if I'm training for a meet, it will be in gear and I will move the bar as fast as I can in a lower percentage, multiple sets, maybe take less rest. So, I mean, it's, I guess it is technically dynamic effort, but it's still, more than anything, it's dialing in my form and making sure that I'm moving, you know, the, the, the everything just the same with as much effort. Um, you know, obviously it, it won't expend as much effort, but, you know, moving as fast as possible. And, uh, you know, I'll do that, you know, every third week, if, if not more, if, if I feel things that are, you know, fading or off a little bit, but I call it form work because first and foremost, I'm making sure my form is in check and right, and then you know I'm, I'm working on speed, of course, too, and explosion. Dave, do you waste your time on that shit? <laughs> 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 I could give a whole seminar just on this thing. I think in the last <laughs> seminar, I spent an hour talking about the max ever method. Um, I think it's essential for for strength athletes. You know, for for bodybuilding hypertrophy, I, the verdict for me is still kind of out on that. Um, only because there's, there's really only three ways to increase muscle tension, and that's using uh, uh, submaximal weights for low repetitions, which would be the maximal effort method, submaximal weights for higher repetitions, which is the repetition method, and then submaximal weights for speed or force or explosiveness, which is the dynamic effort method. Now, how those methods are going to be utilized in one's training program all depends upon what their philosophy, background, and experience is. So a lot of the times the people that tell you they don't use the dynamic effort method actually do. It's just fit into a different phase of their training program or block. They may not use a conjugate type system. They may use something that's more uh, block oriented or you know, structured in a, in a different way, but they have phases where they're using submaximal weights at higher velocities and higher force than then otherwise, instead of trying to couple it together or conjugate it together throughout the training program, you know, for instance, Brian just said he does a lot of the submaximal weights when he's doing his warm up using essentially the dynamic effort method. So it is in there. Um, so a lot of times it stems from the misunderstanding of what the actual method is and how it can be applied. A lot of people may be applying it with box jumps and things of that sort, but not necessarily with their main lift. So the actual method is in the program, and I think it does need to be in any strength training program, because if, if you have these three main tools that are gonna make you stronger, you should be tapping into each one of them. The one thing that I found through experience with working with people for so long is the, um, each one of them have different um, staying powers or lengths that you can get away from them and still maintain the, the benefits. The max effort method is the one that you can't stay away from very long. You know, if you're in a maximal phase, you know, say that for a lot of people who program up into a, a training cycle, they'll get three or four weeks with that max effort method, then they'll do a meet, and then, you know, they stop using the method for three weeks, they're gonna drop 10, 15% of their strength because they got away from that maximal effort method, but you can't do it forever either. So the staying power for that isn't very long. You know, you can use it, but it doesn't stick. But it has, to, I mean, out of all of them, that's the number one most important one when getting ready for a strength contest. The repetition method, that stays probably the longest. You know, if you can curl something for a set of 10 today, you can probably not curl anything for five months and come back and do the same damn thing for 10 as long as your maximal strength is still up usually the repetition strength is going to be up unless you really, really forced it. The dynamic work or the, the, the benefits that you pick up from a dynamic effort method, from what I've seen personally and through people that I've worked with, the, the higher level athlete or the higher level the strength athlete is and the higher training experience, the longer the duration is, but they can hold it for about four to six weeks. 
So a lot of times you'll see a lot of these guys who are, are geared lifters like to get away from the dynamic work and actually trade it out with shirt work as they get into the meet. They're going to maintain their speed for about four to six weeks. After that, it will, it's going to start to drop off a little bit. Then they'll notice a little lack of pop out of the bottom, you know, the shirt or the squat or so forth. So it, it can be phased in differently, you know, for that. But for the most part, if somebody's using it and they do want to pull it out, I generally don't recommend more than four weeks, you know, getting away from it unless it's going to be replaced with maybe a plyometric push up or some type of med ball throw or something to kind of maintain the base of the quality that you're working for that. But I, and Julia said the repetition part of it. There's a lot of things that are very essential because it's more central nervous oriented and then muscular or the muscular system. And that's why I think it needs to be a part of it. It's just figuring out how to fit it into your own training philosophy instead of just borrowing somebody else's philosophy and saying, this is what I need to do.